Hi, I'm Eric Rawlinson, and I run the Purdue Agribusiness Salisbury Crush Plant. We crush about 1,800 tons of soybeans a day. I'm gonna take you through the whole journey of what happens at the plant and how we separate out each part of the bean that comes in our facility. A soybean is about 20% oil, 5% hull, and 75% meal. And we process all three parts at the crush plant. It all starts at the supply tanks. The beans that come in to us have already been graded, cleaned, and dried. Because we're a 24-7 continuous operation, our grain team works very hard to keep these supply tanks filled up for us. From the supply tanks, the beans go up a leg and across a conveyor into a scale. We scale all the beans going into the plant where they are cleaned one more time. Since grain has already done this once, we usually just find sticks and stems at this point. Next, we crack the beans. We have three crack and roll machines. If you look closely, you can see the spiral corrugations we use on the rolls to crack them. First into halves and then into quarters and eighths. This helps separate the hull from the bean. Next, the cracks go to the primary tables. The primary tables are another set of shaker screener tables where we use air to lift the hulls from the soybeans. This is an important step for the quality process. If the beans are cracked too finely, then the air can't properly separate the hull from the bean where the oil is and we want to get to that oil. The holes are lifted with air to some bag houses. The air pulls the holes into the bag houses and then filters the air out by releasing it into the atmosphere. Once that's done, you're left with this, the beans themselves and the holes we've separated from them. We then take the holes to the secondary tables where we use gravity and vibration to do another sweep of the holes and make sure we haven't left any cracks behind. We convey them to the grinders to get them down to size. One of our finished products after that whole process is these ground hulls, which we also call mill feed. Now we're gonna go back to the soybeans themselves, or what we call the cracks. The cracks go out to a rotary kiln that we call our bean conditioner. These beans feed into this tank, then the vessel turns and the beans roll all around. The steam heated tubes inside the vessel heat the cracks up. The warm cracks are then sent to our eight flake and roll machines where we flake the beans. The beans are fed into the nip of the roll. The goal here is to create a 15 thousandth of an inch thick flake which is ideal for the extraction process. We'll get to that shortly. Here's what the flakes look like. The flakes are then conveyed to our extraction area. We use a hydrocarbon called hexane in the extraction area. The extractor is made up of 16 stationary baskets shaped like a piece of pie. This is what it looks like inside. You can see the hexane and oil that's been extracted can go through the screen while the flakes will be supported. At the bottom of the extractor here, you can see the discharge screw and the pumps. It pulls a little oil out, then the pump pumps it back up one basket closer to where the flakes are being fed in until most of the oil has been washed out of the flakes. At the end of it, you're left with a mixture of about 25% oil, 75% hexane. Then we use a four-step distillation process to boil the hexane out of the oil. In the distillation process, we use vessels under high mercury vacuum to lower the boiling point from hexane's usual 156 degrees at atmospheric pressure. From there, the oil continues through the remaining three high vacuum steps of the distillation process. In Salisbury, all the oil coming out of the crush plant is pumped straight back to the refinery here on site. So once we've extracted the oil, we have to handle all the flakes we still have left. At this point, they're about 30% saturated with hexane. We convey the flakes up to a desolventizer toaster, what we call a DT, where they are put onto eight steam heated trays that boil off the leftover hexane. The flakes go straight down into the lower decks where they continue to be steam treated to boil out all the hexane. Once it's finished in the DT, the soybean meal will look like this. It's about 18% moisture at this point, which is too wet. It goes into a dryer cooler where we pull ambient air through a steam coil to dry the meal down. Finally, it goes back in the prep building where our cracking flaking took place and we grind it to size. The meal is conveyed out to our storage tanks and from there goes to our meal loadout and shed so we can load the trucks. We can load a meal truck in about six or seven minutes. We can also convey the meal to storage tanks at our feed mill that's here on site. And that's how it works. I hope this video helped you learn a little more about what happens to your beans after you bring them into Purdue. Thank you for your partnership.